Rotso Panalaba. Now, somebody put in the comments today, having the nature. And y'all know when we come on here Tuesdays and Fridays, uh, really, it's just, it's like a talk. Uh, we're just having like a talk here. I'm not trying to get all teachy and preachy. I just want to talk to you about a few things. We have plenty of other days during the week that we, we really minister and we really preach and teach. But I just want to talk to somebody about the nature. Somebody say having the nature. Put in the comments today, having the nature. Uh, bless you, Nicole, my, my good friend. She's still on here, Nicole Wilson. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that word over Nicole. Bless you. Somebody put in the comments today, having the nature. I want to help somebody's gift today. Having the nature, having the nature, having the nature. Hallelujah. I know there's plenty of more y'all on here. Having the nature. Now, I want you to know that there is a nature that is in you. There's a spiritual nature that is already in you. There's a capacity that's already in you. There's a nature that's already in you. There's gifts that are already in you. There's tools, there's an aperture that's already in you, in your spirit. Your soul is actually just growing into the nature you already contain. Oh, somebody's not hearing me today. Your soul is just growing into the na nature that you already contain. I want you to understand when, when you have a nature, it's not something you have to try to do. Neither is it something that you have to try to grow into. When you have a nature, it's not something that you have to try to do. Neither is it something that you have to try to grow into. But in fact, listen to the word nature. You have a nature. So everything that has a nature, there's something that comes natural. Ah, uh, I'm getting excited by my own message, by my own talk today. There's something that comes natural. Uh, some of you guys, some of y'all may have read my book. I teach about the gifts. I talk about gifts and talents, spiritual gifts, so on and so forth. When you have a gift, it's something that was given. So you already have it. The Bible says the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. So there's something in you that you already possess that maybe even some of you haven't discovered yet. Some of us haven't discovered the gift yet, but there's something there. So then we experience evidences of the gift, small evidences, dreams, visions, special ability to do certain things. These are evidences of gifts. And understand that wherever there's a gift, there's purpose. Wherever there's a gift, there's purpose. So the nature is already in you. The nature, the capacity to do whatever God has called you to do, it's already in you. Watch this, and it's fully mature. Bless you, Deborah Williams. Somebody didn't hear me. It's already in you and it's fully mature. Ah, it's fully mature. Why, why do I say that? Because when God looks at you in the realms of the spirit, he sees a finished work. 
but there's another nature that's at work. There's another nature that's at work in you that is fighting the nature of God that's in you. So this thing inside of you is dangerous. It's fully mature. It's 100%. Let me say it this way. Let me say it in this language that you'll understand. It's perfect. Ah, the hidden man of the heart that carries this nature, that possesses the mind of Christ. Uh, it's perfect. Why? Because there's nothing that God creates that's outside of perfection. But that your own soul and the nature of the flesh that's in you easily becomes an enemy to the nature of God that's trying to come forth out of you. So there's something inside of you that's fully mature. There's something inside of you that's living and that's brooding to breathe. That's why the Bible says that uh, uh, the earth groans for the revealing of the sons and daughters of glory. So there's already something present that's trying to come forth. Your soul is just simply catching up with a fully grown gift that's on the inside of you. Because notice that your gift doesn't need to grow. Your spirit doesn't need to grow. Your soul is growing into the gift and the spirit that you already are. So the nature of the flesh is that enmity of the nature of God that's within you. And your soul is just in between. Your soul is the middleman. Your soul is like, my name is Ness. I ain't in this mess. But the nature of the flesh and the nature of God, there's an enmity there. Let's read in the book of uh, uh, Romans chapter eight. It says, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. That's the nature of a carnal mind. Uh, it says here, so then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but the spirit. Notice the scripture talking about your nature. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit, the nature of God is life because of righteousness. Notice the language, righteousness. Righteousness refers to the perfection seed of God. The Bible calls you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, the Bible is basically saying your righteousness is not determined on what you do. It's determined on what Jesus did. Righteousness, this word righteousness, it's a word in the dimension of the spirit, referring to a perfect nature, righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And then we go on to talk about, therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh, for if ye live according to the flesh, ye will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body or the carnal nature, you will live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God who carry the nature of God. Huh? For you did not receive the spirit of bondage or the nature of the world or the nature of the flesh. You didn't receive this spirit to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, the nature of the father by whom we cry out, Abba, father. Is somebody hearing me today? 
It says here, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs. Ah, now it's talking about the nature of a king. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, then we may also be glorified together. My goodness. Uh, listen, it's crazy when you read the scripture in the unction of the Holy Ghost because it's just packed with revelation. Now, here's what I want to say. Uh, there's a nature that's in you that's already fully grown, fully mature, holds its own capacity. But notice in the scripture here we read, it says that the spirit will quicken your mortal body. What does that mean? It means that the spirit, the Holy Spirit and your spirit are working together to cause you to catch up to the nature that's already in you. To cause you to catch up to the nature that's already in you. Now, I know we're getting a little bit deep. I'm going to simplify this for many of you guys. Amen. Somebody put in the comments, simplify it, prophet. <laughs> simplify, simplify. Amen. Bless you, Margaret. Bless you, Crystal. Bless you, Rhonda. So I want you to understand that the gifts and the callings of God are already within you. God never calls something out of you that you don't possess the ability to contain. So the tools, uh, the tools for the spirit in which your nature comes from are already in you. Let me say it this way. The tools, the abilities, um, the functionality for the dimension that God has called you to function in, they're already in you. So watch this. When the dimension meets you, it clicks. It clicks and everything all of a sudden begins to make sense. So in other words, uh, let me say it this way. Uh, Karen says simplify. Let me say it this way. When God called me into the prophetic, intellectually and in my mind, I did not know what the prophetic was. But because I was born a prophet, and the Lord called me as a prophet before the foundations of the world to stand in a prophetic office. Amen. Because of this, when the prophetic met me, I already possessed the aperture. I already possessed the tools and the ability for that dimension. I'm, I'm going to help somebody today. Somebody stay with, with me and also share the broadcast because somebody's going to get blessed today. I'm going to help you. I, I didn't used to always be able to prophesy like I do. Why? Because it wasn't about me trying to prophesy. Somebody's not hearing me. It wasn't about me trying to prophesy. It was about me receiving the dimension of the prophetic that was being delivered to me. Uh, in other words, the nature of a fish is to swim in water. The nature of a fish demands water in order for the fish to thrive and to swim and to live. So what am I saying? I'm saying that your gift carries a nature that needs the right environment, the right atmosphere. It needs the right dimension to live, to breathe, and to grow. Because trying to grow is outside of the ability, the ability to naturally grow. Anything in its own nature already has the components to naturally grow within the nature and the spirit of that nature which it came from. Uh, I think I'm getting a little too deep. I, I saw some people jump off. I'm trying to help somebody today. 
led you to get a revelation of your nature. Because there are specific qualities that your nature possesses. And when you become to discover who you really are in Christ, you're no longer trying. You're doing what naturally comes to your spirit to do. That's why I don't have to try to prophesy. That's why I don't have to try to revelate because the spirit, the nature of a revelator is in me. The nature of a prophet is in me. So when these dimensions visit my spirit, click, click, things work. Why? Because the nature is already in me. What am I saying? There's something that God is calling out of you. There's a nature that he's trying to reveal to you that you possess. That when the dimension meets you, click, click, all of a sudden things start working. Things start happening. Because it's what God has already put on the inside of you. You possess the components. Think about it. When you have a, 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 a Windows laptop, when you have a Windows laptop and you go to put Chromebook software on a Windows laptop, what happens? Chromebook software function in a Windows laptop because the nature of the device is Windows. Even though all laptops look the same, the nature of the laptop makes a difference whether or not it functions. When you have a Mac and iOS for all of my iPhone, in Jesus' name, we pray for all the iPhone users and we thank the Lord for Android. I'm just messing. When you have an iOS, iOS rejects Android. Not because iOS was wrong, but because iOS contains a nature that demands iOS software. MacBook contains a nature that demands iOS software. Chromebook demands Chrome software. Microsoft demands Microsoft software. It's the nature that determines the components that work with it. Uh, so, so, so somebody's struggling, not because they're wrong, because they're trying to connect the wrong software to the nature possess and what they already are. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen, I want to pray for somebody today. I want to pray for your nature. Amen. And listen, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to go too, too deep because we're just having a talk here. I want to inspire somebody's spirit to begin to begin to get a revelation of the nature that God has already deposited in you. I pray that you be blessed body, soul, and spirit. I pray that you be whole even as your soul is whole. I pray that God begins to draw every piece and part of you together as one so that you can begin to know who you are in Christ and how God has called you. Amen. Father, I pray right now for everybody watching today in Jesus' almighty name at the sound of my voice. I pray that your blessing will rest upon every house. I pray that your word would rest upon every heart Every prophetic for, prophetic word that was released, Lord God, let it be uh, let it be received, let it be sealed in Jesus' almighty name. I pray. Father, I pray for everyone that's connecting. Let them not remain the same this Tuesday. Lord, I pray for balance. I pray, Lord God, that you would bless their, their house and cause them to walk in your spirit, in every dimension, in every capacity that you've called them to walk. Listen, let me say it this way. I'm going to finish with this. There's grace. This, uh, I feel real simple what I want to say to you. It's not hard. This calling you is not a hard thing. Yes, it will challenge you. 
but there's a grace that God desires for you to walk with. Somebody just needs to take a deep breath. And somebody just needs to say it's okay. Because even with this ministry, people look at our ministry. Listen, sometimes people call me, you're too deep. You're too deep. No, I'm not deep. That's the nature that God's given our ministry. Uh, deep calls unto deep. What does that mean? It means that God's given this ministry a dimension that draws on the souls who are hungry for that dimension. So it's not just about being deep because even Jesus was deep. But Jesus was deep and many, many, many people failed to get the revelation out of his messages because it wasn't for everybody. But Jesus spoke in a way that commanded the spirits of people around him to hunger for deeper things. And not that deeper things are supplicated for anyone to actually, in its nature, it's simple. In its nature, it's actually simplicity. What makes it simplicity? What makes it simplicity is that it's easy for you to understand the thing that you actually come out of. So when your spirit connects, the spiritual things are easy to understand because now you're in the spirit. But it's hard for you to understand when you're not in the spirit because you're actually trying to understand spiritual things from another nature. When if you simply enter into the spirit, spiritual things become easy. Why? Because you were born of that nature. You came out of that nature. So now it's easy. But anyone who's not of that nature, the Bible says that they can't receive the things of the spirit. Why? Because you're carnally minded. But when you simply transition into the nature of the spirit, spiritual things come easy. What God has been delivering to you all along that seems so complicated and hard to get, all of a sudden it becomes easy to you because you get a revelation of the nature that was already in you. So it's actually really simple. So Jesus was very simple. He actually gave a very simple message. It was complex. It was a complex in its nature, but it was only complicated to those who were, who were unable to receive the nature of the Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you would shift this. I pray, Lord, that you would activate our ears to hear your word to hear the things of the spirit today in jesus almighty name cause us to walk in a grace cause us to walk in the simplicity of your spirit and your word and the nature of christ in jesus almighty name that makes even the deep things of god simple because it's where we actually come from. Somebody pray in the spirit today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for awakening the nature of the Spirit within us. In Jesus' almighty name, Lord, I pray. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. There's so much more to teach on this subject. Amen. I wish I could just keep going. But I got to finish my day here. And uh, I want to bless you guys. I know you guys have a whole day ahead of you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Get connected with the ministry, michaelwatsonministries.com. And real quick, for those of you who uh, came on a little bit later, if you want to sow a seed into this ground, you want to mark a sacrifice on this place and receive for your house on this ground, you can do so with the avenues there. We just put up our Zelle, actually. We put up our Zelle and our Venmo is now active. So. 
you guys can access it that uh, through those avenues there. Uh, Cash App, Venmo, Zell, PayPal. Bless your seed today. And um, I pray that you guys enjoy the rest of your day and your week. And we will see you guys throughout the week. Tomorrow is Wednesday. For those of you in Cleveland, make sure you get out here um, on uh, to one of our in-person uh, one of our in-person services. Here's the address there on the screen. We're here Wednesdays and Sundays at 6:30. Also, we just put a new date on the calendar. We have um, real quick, we have a, a, another Deliverance Friday on on April 28th. Also, next weekend, I think it's next weekend, y'all. I will be in Mount Vernon, Ohio with Prophet Michael and Jill Tate. It is going to be extremely powerful. A powerful move of God. Listen, the last time we were there, it was too much. God moved in so many different ways. The prophetic was on fire. Listen, it was crazy. Amen. It was a very blessed time in the Lord. Everybody in that house received the prophetic word. Every single one. They lined up. They kept us there the whole time praying because God was moving in such a mighty way. So if you're in Ohio, if you're in Cleveland, you definitely want to make it out to this event. It's going to be blessed. Also, we have prospects in mind. Uh, we these are these are some things that we're working on. Listen, if you want to bring Prophet Michael to your church or your location, talk with your pastors. We have put together a budget for traveling. So those of you who want to bring us to where you are, we will we'll teach. Uh, we'll we'll prophesy. We'll pray. We'll 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 pray to activate gifts to activate the prophet where you are. Also, uh, specifically, some these states are some of the ones that are our target. Interested, please reach out to ministry and we'll get connected with you in that way. Praise the Lord. Listen, God bless you guys. I want to invite somebody to join our School of the Prophets. We have over 20 students in our ministry schools. It's very, very blessed. We're doing something new every single day. We are just so full. Um, I know my friend, my good friend Nicole Wilson's on. Nicole, praise the Lord. Bless you. Nicole, you still there? I know I'm I'm a hard person to stay in touch with Nicole, but my prayers are always still going out to you, woman of God. Um, she remembers a time where I was going through a really really rough place, a really really rough place, and we spoke, and I remember the word of the Lord was due to many things that God is even doing presently in this season. This is a result, Nicole, and even as your witness, Nicole, this is a result of the things that I was even going through in that time, which is why they were so challenging. Amen. But I want to remind somebody that no matter what you're going through, God has great things in store for you. You're the one who determines your story. Amen. There was a time there. Listen, there was so easy to fold up and quit. And, and just bury myself in that time. There were things that I went through that I can't even talk about on the broadcast, amen. And my, my good friend, she knows and she remembers some of these things. I wanna encourage somebody because listen, this is what you'll get out of this ministry, just a little bit of transparency because I in no way would not be here if it wasn't for the Lord. Everything that you see that God does here in this ministry is only by his grace. I'm a child of grace, amen. So I take none of the credit from what Christ and what the Lord is doing in this place. I'm just a prophet. The Holy Spirit is the gift. And so I can come to you in this way because there's a place where the Lord will, will humble you, especially the, to the measure that he humbles you is an indication to the height and the capacity that he's calling you. It's an indication to the height and the capacity that he's calling you. Amen. Uh, I didn't know the depth of spirit that God wanted to take me. All I knew was the challenges and all I knew were the uh, trials and the tremendous weights that were standing before me. I didn't understand it at the time, but the Lord knew. Amen. So if you can cooperate with the season that you're in, some of you are going through some really rough things. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you it's worth it. And your spirit look forward and move the hard place. Why? Because your spirit knows something that your soul doesn't. 
Your soul may be steady under heaviness, but your spirit knows something your soul doesn't. Your spirit knows what God is trying to deliver to you. Your spirit knows the capacity and it knows the great things that are ahead of you. Your soul may be in a season where it may feel even depressed, but connect with the joy of the Lord that resides in your spirit that knows what God is trying to deliver to you in Jesus' almighty name. I pray somebody's encouraged today. I pray somebody stands firm in the hard place. I pray that you remain under his hand, that he may exalt you in due season. In Jesus' almighty name, amen and amen. Listen, that's as, uh, that's as, <clears throat> as uncut as it can get, right? Uh, but I, I, I hold nothing back and I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those of you who are interested in the ministry school or in our School of the Prophets, Watch this video, consider for our program today, especially if you're a gift. There are those of you who got directing here. Reason, if that's you, you to connect. Make sure you're hearing from the Lord. Get connected. We have so much to do in the seasons to come. And uh, I believe the Lord wants many of you to be a part of it if he's calling you in that way. God bless you. I'll see you guys next time on the broadcast. Enjoy the rest of your week. I love you and the Lord loves you more. And Jesus loves you. I'll see you guys next time on the broadcast. Watch this. Consider signing up for our program if the Lord is tapping on you to do so today. Is not functioning when you're.